Joining me, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist and host of Behind the Curtain with Jack Berkman. Catch him every Saturday night on the Radio America Network and Sunday afternoons at 2 on WMAL in Metro D.C. Also, Mark Levine, nationally syndicated radio talk show host and the Democratic nominee for the 45th District of the Virginia House of Delegates. This week, the Republican National Committee sent out a loyalty pledge to all of the candidates asking that they wouldn't run as an independent if they didn't get the nomination. The move signaled a major change in tone for Republican frontrunner Donald Trump. The best way for the Republicans to win is if I win the nomination and go directly against whoever they happen to put up. And for that reason, I have signed the pledge. With a giant marker. And just last month at the first GOP debate, Trump refused to make the pledge. Jack, what's your take? Is this a good move by Mr. Trump? Oh, yeah, it's a good move. I think it's substantively irrelevant, Morris, because if Trump were an independent, frankly, if anyone were an independent in this climate, I don't think you could win a single state, maybe one small state somewhere. I don't think it means a whole lot. Actually, in terms of substance, I think Trump was right the first time uh, when he basically said, I, you know, it's the right answer because you don't foreclose your options. You know, it's like pledging in absolute terms. I will never raise taxes. Well, what if there's a war? What if we run into World War II or 9-11 or what have you? So you should never say never, but politics, sure, it's a good move. Now, many in the party were upset that the RNC would even send a loyalty pledge to the candidates, even though it's not legally binding. Mark, what do you think of the move as a whole? Should the RNC make its candidates promise not to run as an independent? Well, I don't think so. I mean, it makes sense for them. They're trying to get some kind of loyalty. It's not legally binding, though. Donald Trump knows that. He's been through enough litigation to know what's legally binding and what's not. It is, however, his ticket to the South Carolina primary. He couldn't participate otherwise. So he's basically playing by the rules they set out for him. Wink, wink, nod, nod. They asked him why he signed. He said, well, right now, you know, I don't intend to run as a third-party candidate. His intentions may change later. I, I don't think it means anything, but the Republican Party, I'm one, sure, is happy. One thing you have to understand about Trump, Morris, is that Trump will not spend a lot of his money. He'll spend and right now it's cheap. I mean, Trump might part with 50 or 60 million, but he's not going to get into spending a, a hundreds of millions of dollars. To run as an independent candidate, to even think about doing that, Trump would have to be willing to spend about a billion dollars. That's billion with a B. He's got for it. Ballot. He's got it, but I can tell you, Donald Trump, uh, he doesn't spend money. He throws nickels around like sewer tops, as the old expression well, well, we'll goes. We'll see, Jack. He said that if the Republican Party treats him fairly, then he's fine with the Republican Party. I think Trump's definition of fair, maybe he wins the nomination. In which case, he doesn't have to leave. <laughs> but if he doesn't win, he may just try that third party thing. Trump also continued his feud with Jeb Bush. The two have been throwing barbs for the past few weeks. But in a recent interview with conservative website Breitbart, Trump said, quote, I like Jeb. He's a nice man, but he should really set the example by speaking English <laughs> while in the United States. Now, Bush speaks fluent Spanish, and he's been taking questions in both English and Spanish. Here's how he responded. Part of it is you laugh because it's so bizarre, but it's hurtful for a lot of people. And Mr. Trump knows this. He's appealing to people's angst and their fears rather than their higher hopes. All right, Jack, about a quarter of Americans are bilingual. Should they be discouraged from speaking other languages? No, no one should be discouraged. Morris, let me, let me answer that question this way. In the last 30 days, I've been to Mexico City, I've been to London, and I've been to Toronto. I just got off the, a, a plane from Toronto. When I landed in all three of those cities, there was only one question people wanted to ask, and that's what's going on with Donald Trump? Nobody asks about anything else in American politics, probably anywhere in the world. That told me just about all I need to know about who our nominee will be and probably how the general election will go next year. Mark, okay to speak Espanol? Uh, I can't believe Donald Trump had the cojones to say something like that. <laughs> I mean, I think the melange of languages that makes us all one country, e pluribus unum, that's what makes America great. It what's, allows me to enjoy jazz at my Chinese restaurant and then go to a sauna afterwards. The irony is that Trump says he wants to make America great again. It is our multiculturalness that makes America great. Well, one thing to remember, Trump is polling well uh, with people of color. He's doing well with minority groups. He's doing much better than expected with Hispanics. He's doing fantastically well with African Americans. There is no The three African American here. Republicans, are they the ones that are polling well with him? Maybe so. Trump is. I'm just waiting for him to become more moderate. I mean, he's doing the right thing now, the analysts would say, by getting the, the, the right wing, the conservatives, but at some point he's got to maybe shift to the middle for oh, the you're general right. election you know, if he course. makes it that far. You're right on the money, Morris. I mean, there's two things Trump has to do, and the question is, when will he do it? One, or just if he can to, do it. Well, or if he can do it. One, one 
want? I think he can. He'll have to moderate, and even more important than that, he'll have to dial it back. Because remember, Trump is shooting scenes and playing a character. You know, this guy's been in national television for 40 years, and he still has a Queen's accent. You know, it's like Bill O'Reilly with his Long Island accent. They work <laughs> on it in front of the mirror every night so they can uh, keep their home down home accent. It's yeah. a joke. I, Trump, I, I think he's actually to me. You talking to me? Yeah, okay. I, I think he's appealing to some Democrats even, particularly when he talks about money in politics. Democrats have been trying to keep money out of politics for a long time. Republicans love cashing those big billionaire checks, and he's making fun of them for it. And in that way, he's actually appealing to more liberals. Let me, let me right, let's, let's switch gears right now. A former top Hillary Clinton aide says he'll plead the fifth and not testify about Clinton's use of her personal email server. Clinton's campaign says it has encouraged all of its employees to speak with investigators, but many find the move suspicious. I know in the past why people have invoked their Fifth Amendment privilege, but, but you'll have to ask him why he did. And you're free to, to glean whatever uh, inference you want from the fact that he did. Now, Mark, this doesn't do anything to put Clinton in the clear. Do you still believe she has nothing to hide? Look, she asked the guy to talk. He didn't want to talk. And the reason his lawyer said he didn't want to talk is because people like that Republican just that you just put on the scene, answer your question. Because, those people, answer your question. because those people are making something that's absolutely not criminal, and they're threatening to make it criminal. It's their irresponsible behavior that's causing people to be cautious. But yeah, sure, I think he should talk. I think they should all talk. Bill, uh, Hillary Clinton didn't do anything wrong. She didn't violate any law. And what's be interesting is I want the reporters to go after Jeb Bush, who also put his stuff on a private server, presumably to avoid Freedom of Information Act requests. Did it violate well, Florida's Jeb sunshine Bush, law? Let me when will people ask his people under oath well, why they put him on a private you're gonna server? Have, you're going to have trouble with that analogy, even if it's true, even conceding it's true. Jeb Bush wasn't Secretary of State. Hillary Clinton No, but Florida had has sunshine laws. And did he put his stuff on yeah, a private well, server to any, avoid those laws? Yeah, I don't well, know. No one's not, asking him. There's not much classified information coming in and out of Tallahassee, so who cares? Look, well, this here, wasn't here's, classified. Here's the no bottom line. No one said line. any of this was classified. I here's, any of this was here's, here's the bottom line on all this, Morris. It has now become clear, and everybody knows it, and I don't even think Democrats are contesting this. Even people like Lanny Davis aren't contesting this from a legal standpoint. It has now become quite clear that she had classified information in the personal email. This company that was doing it, everybody's running for you the hills. You said quite clear, this but is, it's not, there's not a single email. Well, the question was statement the to both of you. It. Why doesn't somebody say, look, yes, we had it on my private server because we don't trust the government server. We knew that the uh, State Department was being hacked by the Russians. That's why she wasn't using the State Department email it because they knew it was being hacked well, all this time. It's, it's not a bad good. argument. Her private server wasn't hacked and our public servers and ours were. Was, but I it's think, a I don't good think argument. They, yeah. It's a good argument, but the problem, Morris, is if they say that, she's pretty much admitting to felonies and having committed federal crimes. There's so no she felony might like to the say felony? that. Well, she's admitting that the U.S. is getting hacked all the time, so go private. All right, many analysts say it doesn't matter if classified information was ever on the server, but the mere act of setting up a personal email server shows Hillary put her own wants and needs above those of the American public. This could be an ongoing problem for her during the campaign. Can she overcome this, Mark? Again, Colin Powell did it. Uh, Jeb Bush did it. Virtually all the governors, Chris Christie did it. But they're not fact, running for president. Well, Chris Christie and Jeb Bush are running for okay. president. Uh, I, I don't think this is the issue. If you don't like Hillary's policies, fine. Don't like her policies. I do think this is a red herring. All right, I, let's I, move on. There's a mass migration crisis hitting Europe right now. Thousands of refugees are fleeing war-torn countries in the Middle East. Now the tragic image of a three-year-old Syrian boy who drowned during the dangerous journey has spurred global interest and outrage. Donald Trump says the U.S. should, quote, possibly, yes, take in some of these migrants. Jack, your party has been so adamant about kicking illegal immigrants out. Now Trump wants to let new migrants in. Is there a double standard here? Well, I think Trump's position on immigration is a lot more nuanced than the media gives him credit for. I think he has a lot of very sophisticated ideas, actually, about the southwest border. In terms of this stuff, and I think Trump would agree with this, uh, I can't speak for Trump, but I'm pretty sure he would. I think most conservatives would agree with this. We have to develop an immigration policy like we had a century ago. We want the good people. We don't want the bad people. We want people with education. We want people with wealth. We want people who will enhance our nation. Sure, we're all torn by the images of these children 
But I mean, we don't want the poor and downtrodden. We want people who will really. Emma Lazarus was wrong. Nation. The Statue of Liberty is wrong. Give me your poor, your tired, huddled masses yearning well, to be free. That's want, not part of the American I, tradition, Jack. I want. I, it the is best. part of my American tradition. Give us your what PhDs. I want is the best for our country. I want the best people we can get well, to bring into this. My nation. great grandfather had twenty dollars when he came to this country, and I think my family did pretty well. I don't know how much your ancestors had when they came to this country, Jack. But to me, the American dream is all about arriving poor and making it good. Here. All right. Another hot topic this week has been the fight for marriage equality. Despite a Supreme Court ruling in July, Kentucky clerk Kim Davis has been jailed for refusing to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples. Now, many Republican candidates are rallying behind her. Jack, is this the wrong move for your party? A majority of Americans believe in gay marriage. No, I think it's, it's the right issue. Remember, Morris, in politics, you don't want the result, you want the issue. So the recent Supreme Court ruling is very good for Republicans and very good for conservatives in that it, it enables us to continue this. Had we won, there wouldn't be much to talk about. You always want the issue. Now we have the issue. This person is just raising her status. Of wow. course, she's wow. raising her Jack. status in Kentucky. She's the, just playing the game. She violated a United States state Supreme Court order. She violated her oath so did of Martin office. Luther King. Are you, so did Martin are you Luther saying King. that our president should violate their oath of office? No, the United States should. Constitution? We're not this saying that at all. This is a very clear what I'm law. Giving you is a, Even a conservative judge appointed by George W. Bush put her in jail I'm giving because you the a law political. couldn't be more clear. If you're telling me that you believe presidents should violate the law, no. I mean, that's a really extreme no, thing to say. Nobody said that, Mark. What I'm giving you is a political analysis of what will happen politically over this. All I'm saying is I think the recent court rule on gay marriage is very beneficial to Republicans. I do think, though, I'll make a prediction, with the number of liberals, if you look at Ginsburg, if you look at even Kennedy, if you look at Breyer, there's a lot of retirements. If Republicans can put a president in the White House in 2016, I think gay marriage will be overturned. I think Roe v. Wade could be overturned. I think right, you've just given a strong go. argument to vote for the Democrats. I can understand the political strategy, though, Jack. I hear where you're coming from. All right, before we go, let's talk about the presidential race in 2020. One hmm. celebrity says he's already planning to run. I have decided in 2020 to run for president. Yes, during the VMA Awards, Kanye West announced to run for the White House. And why not? What's the difference between him and Donald Trump? I, I, I don't. I'm not no politician, bro. How stupid are these politicians? <laughs> I just wanted people to like me more. I think they like me in a certain way, which is nice. It's always nice to be liked. You know how many times they announced Taylor was going to give me the award because it got them more ratings? The only thing they care about is ratings. <laughs> All right. Mark, you make you, a strong would you vote point. For Kanye? <laughs> no, but I wouldn't vote for Donald Trump either. However, you do make a very strong point. They have a lot in common. Jack, what about you? Vote for think, Kanye in 2020? Oh, sure. I'll write Kanye his first check. I think, Morris, that uh, it's a very good thing when you have people from outside the political system getting into the game. I think we need more of it in this That's country. That's the way the founding fathers wanted it. Do Serve your time, get out, and let some other common people yeah, absolutely. come in. The, the one thing Kanye and Trump have in common is they both have very strong egos. <laughs> All right. Mark Levine, Democratic strategist. Jack Berkman, Republican strategist. The best political panel on TV. Thanks to you both. Thank you, Thanks, Morris. Morris. Thank you, Mark.